Good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel where today instead of looking at one of my custom sets I've been around the internet and I am going to share with you my favourite and in my opinion the best LEGO Zelda mocks that are out there right now and I'll be letting you know, guys know if these are ones that you can buy or support on ideas and all of that jazz and I just want to preface this with saying that none of my mocks are included in the video so there will be credits listed on the right hand side of every page. If you're looking for more specific detail on one of them let me know down below in the comments and of course I will give you directions to where I found the, the image. I've been collecting these for the last three years and I think it's about time that we share some love with the other people in this community and talk about some of the mocks that go underappreciated. Some of course the more influential names that you may have heard of such as uh, Spinach Bricks, um, Hylian Bricks and uh, Pixel Bricks all make fantastic creations but none of them are going to be featured today. I'm more focused on ones that you can find on a Google image, ideas or rubricable search. So without further ado let's get in and share a little bit of love while we prepare for Wave 4 here on our channel with the best LEGO Zelda mocks that I could find. And starting us off today, we have our first one, which is, of course, an Ocarina of Time at Poe. More specifically, I think in this case, it's pretty much Meg. And this is a mock by Julius von Brunk, and I found this on the Brothers Brick website where they had featured it. However, you can see here it's a bit more of an abstract taste, uh, take on the Poe. You've got its lantern in its hand, and you've got lots of technique and slopes all piled up to create the ghostly little effect. But I personally love the eyes and just how much it actually actually looks recognizable at least to me I could tell it was a Poe as soon as I looked at it and I think it's really really cool with all these different angles um, and that's what made it stand out for me um, to be here today but we've got quite a few to take a look at so I'm going to keep things moving fairly fast we have this mock by MB Mocks a new or well maybe not so new face in the Zelda mock community who has been making some amazing ideas projects and this one is one that he has teased that he's working on and this is of course the Sheikah Tower I believe specifically one of the complete ones so we'll just say the Great Plateau and you can see here he's used a variety of techniques to create what is essentially a fantastic minifigure scale uh, tower from Breath of the Wild and you can see the Sheikah eye details and all of the other bits around the platform everything's been recreated perfectly faithfully and I cannot wait to see the rest of this thing when it's complete my only unfortunate thing is I'm pretty sure those sausages don't come in sand blue so this build is not actually possible with the current piece market however I'm, I'm hoping one day that it will either become available or there's another solution that we can look into either way still a fantastic and one of the most detailed Zelda mocks out there right now at least at this scale we then have this mock by Speedyhead who is a returning name that you will see throughout this list and this is his micro scale Breath of the Wild. It's based off a 32 by 32 base plate that has the four divine beasts and it's one of the few mocks that I've seen that have the divine beasts shrunk down at this scale while still looking pretty fantastic and obviously this has been built in real life meaning that all the pieces exist meaning that this is entirely doable by um, real people and actually one thing that I love here is the terrain. We're using a lot of different snot work and all four of them look very very unique and then you've got these miniature representations of uh, like the Gerudo Highlands and the Tabantha Village using mushroom caps along with stuff like uh, the Laneru wetlands using these trees in the back of stud shooters which is such a cool technique. Overall it may be a little bit cramped for my liking but it is a good artistic interpretation of the Zelda world from Breath of the Wild and I think it looks well pretty fantastic to be honest uh, although maybe a bit difficult to actually build. Next up we have one of my all time favourites and this is of course uh, by Han was Yellow First. This was an ideas project that reached 10k and was unfortunately rejected. Unfortunately you cannot support it now or buy instructions. If you see instructions for this model anywhere other than Rubricable, these are of course fake instructions and I recommend you do not buy them. Uh, there is a second stable mock on Rubricable now that isn't his design either but that's another alternative for you. But for me it will always be this one that was the original. It was incredible and particularly so to see such a... I'd say non-iconic model to get 10k on ideas because let's face it the stables is not the most iconic part of Breath of the Wild that of course goes to the castle and wow does this model look incredible all of the details all of the colors and all of the shaping is so wonderful and the horse head looks great as well even the minifigures uh, were in a definite state and for it to get 10k but also just look fantastic it was such a shame that this model wasn't approved I really really think so either way definitely one of the best we've ever seen from the community 
Next up, we have a fairly new one by Demon Hunter Bricks, and this is a Master Sword, um, I believe, in life size, and it genuinely looks incredible. It is very, very cool and looks great on the stand. I particularly love the hilt area. I think he's just captured it perfectly using that dark blue color, and of course, the blade is made really good use of snot techniques. Overall, a slightly newer mock that not many people have talked about. We then have one of these old fashioned ones on LDD by Brick Cluster. This is an ideas project which didn't rate, uh, reach 10k, probably because of Skyward Sword's lack of popularity. However, I still find this one incredibly cool. This one of his is actually based off the Lanayru mining facility and also includes pixel art of the original NES link on the floor. Lots of different features, all Skyward Sword authentic, as well as lots of different enemy builds such as the Bee Moss and Skull and Ancient Robots, all looking fantastic, along with lots Lots of lots of transformation features and explosions it's definitely worth checking this out on lego ideas just to see all the effort he puts in and hopefully one day i'm going to recreate it and upgrade it to its original form and the next one I have is another new one. This is the Koroks by Bricole, and he has represented four of the Breath of the Wild Koroks at a smaller scale. My favorite one definitely has to be the one with his flying little stick. I just think he looks the best, followed by the one on the far left. However, all four are perfectly recognizable, and while the face shapes don't always work, they do look wonderfully cute and are a great addition to any Breath of the Wild fans collection. I'm definitely looking at trying to piece one or two of them together. Next up we have a mock by Too Much Caffeine and this is Ganondorf. It is a large scale figure once again featured on uh, bro the Brothers Brick. He's using a variety of pieces to create this look and actually they're all available in real life and his face in particular looks absolutely incredible and actually I'm a big fan of his legs as well. Um, but that head that really really stands out, it looks exactly like Ganondorf and is a great mock that I've heard no one talk about. Next up, a returning feature from Speedyhead. This is a small Majora's Mask mock, which looks absolutely incredible, making use of some really clever parts usage to achieve the very iconic shape of the mask at this small scale. I love the use of a transparent colors for the eyes, not to mention the one by one round printed pieces as well. It looks really, really sleek on this display and definitely a model I would love to have. Next up by Marcus Rollbuer, we have a head of Cass, which does also look incredible. Very, very interesting techniques here. Very, very like small and, and fiddly. In particular, I'm thinking that cheese slope that's shoved just into his neck. I think this would be a fairly difficult one to recreate because it looks like there's a lot of engineering going on on the inside. However, that won't stop me from trying and I definitely think it will be an interesting challenge. We also have a mock by Me Bricks, and I'm not here, this this isn't here for the minifigure, this is here entirely for the build, which I think looks fantastic at this micro scale. For the Breath of the Wild Hyrule Castle, it's instantly recognisable, it's all got the little bits of malice and sludge, and the little bit of dishevelled look for the towers that are broken off, while also including this nice dark tan base and a couple of minimal stickers, which I honestly don't necessarily think you need if you just wanted to have this micro scale sanctum on your desk. We also have another one of the classics. This is the Gannon's Organ by Mingles. This one goes way, way back in ideas history, way back to like 2012, 2013, if I remember correctly. And it is just the Ganon Organ with his arena and then also Zelda in this crystal. And this project was less about the model and more about introducing all the pieces. So we included renders of all of like the hat molds and the shield molds and so on. And it's been rather influential in the history of the Lego Zelda like ideas projects ever since. Overall, it's just one of those really, really iconic builds. While not the most technically impressive, it is still very, very nostalgic, especially for people like me. We then have another one of Hanwha's Yellow First. This was done to celebrate a uh, milestone of supporters on LEGO Ideas. And this is a little visionette of Link using Magnesis. Obviously not actually possible to be built given the uh, lack of transparent pieces. However, it is still a gorgeous landscape and definitely looks like a Breath of the Wild model. I would love to be able to try and recreate this even if the magnet had to be in solid blue uh, just to make it possible. Either all, it's really, really cool. I love the water techniques and the cliff techniques and all of the colors. It's absolutely fantastic. A great little visionette for be sure another mock though by brickbot 2.0 we have the best of the sheikah shrines that i think i've seen i don't know what it is about this one whether it's the color choices or the simplicity but also that lots and lots of curvy details made up of the dark tan plates and slopes and tiles looks absolutely fantastic it definitely looks like a sheikah shrine it's the most recognizable one that i've seen and really keeps that color palette nice and simple just so it doesn't overwhelm you i definitely think it looks the most like a shrine and i really love the shaping work that's been done in order to make it 
as accurate as possible. You've also got this adorable little Korok side build, which I think looks amazing and just an overall really outstanding build. We then have a mock by VB, and this is Varty the Wind Mage. And um, this is using some very, very clever parts usage, such as some Technic elements around the top, but also these large balloon elements and horns and things. And it, it looks genuinely fantastic to create all of these unique shapes uh, around the Wind Mage. And it looks so much like his sprite from the Minish Cap. I just genuinely couldn't believe my eyes when I saw it. And it's very, very clever, at least I think so. So I'm um, definitely deserving of a spot on today's list. Now it is time for a break and a quick brick heads roundup. These are my favorite of the Lego Legend of Zelda brick heads that I've been able to see, and let me tell you, there are loads of them. So uh, definitely let me know if I've missed any down below. First up, we have this Wolf Link one by Hylian Builder. I mean, it looks absolutely great, definitely relies heavily on the sticker on its forehead. However, fantastic, great model. Next up, we have this group of six from Breath of the Wild by Stormythos. And we have a great Breath of the Wild Link and Zelda here, as well as the four champions, best versions that I have seen. Really, really creative part usage, specifically on Rivali's nose, which is making use of the little gaps which attach to anti-studs to create little holes or nostrils in his beak. Next up, we have a Twilight Princess Zelda and Ganondorf by Greg KTM. The Ganondorf here looks absolutely incredible, and so does the Zelda. Definitely the best variations of the Twilight Princess lot that I've seen. And then we have the Majora's Mask Transformations by Greg KTM as well, and these also look fantastic. Another ones that I want to try and build, although I'm pretty sure that some of these pieces aren't actually available. Next up, we have a Toon Link by Diamond Vice, and this is just my favorite of the Toon Link designs. I really love the use of the Nautilus print on his belt buckle, and the hair just looks great to me. I think it's a great figure all around. We then have Girahim by Clutcherini, and uh, this was a model I tried to make myself. However, this one is, is just fantastic. It's just done so much, so much better, and I love all the little details like the earring and the way the hair lays. I think modern pieces really, really helped this one, and I need to make a couple of alterations for the ones that weren't actually available in those colors. Next up, we have Deku Scrubs to 73's Guardian Brickheads, and I apologize for the blurry image, it's the best I could find. And this was just such a cute idea to have a Guardian in a Brickheads form, and all of the pieces are actually available for this guy, and he looks fantastic. There's just something about him that looks super, super cute. And then lastly, we have a mock by Pick a Brick, which is the Lionel and Kilton 2-pack for Brickheads. Both of these look fantastic, less iconic Breath of the Wild characters, but they look really, really great and actually work surprisingly well in Brickheads form. So they took me by surprise and definitely made the list. Moving into some more creature builds, we have Axe in the Faces Lazalfo as part of one of his bigger builds, however I just really like the way that he'd be constructed. Obviously he's recolored Mixel ball joints into green, which is something LEGO would never do, making this model a little bit worse for wear when you consider that these parts aren't available. However, I still really, really love the head construction, the sticker used on the back, and just the scaling, just being just a bit taller than a minifigure, which is exactly right considering Link's head can fit under Lazalfo's neck when you freeze him in Cryonis form. Next up we have Sacred Bricks' Moblin, the basis of the Moblin that I'll be using uh, for my brick builds, however obviously not for my custom set showcase, however this model is fantastic, makes great uses of existing prints such as the My Minecraft pink piece, as well as using that horn piece to a beautiful effect, I really hope that Lego's Moblin would look like this if they made an official one. Next up we have Monk Maz Kosha by Creative Brick Building, another fantastic looking build that uses some illegal techniques but to great effect to create a really accurate looking Monk Maz Kosha and I'm, again this one just took me by surprise and I think it looks really really cool. Next up by Frugal Fun for Boys we have a chibified Link and Zelda from Breath of the Wild. I just really like their faces, they remind me of Millie Lang figures but with more expression so I was really really glad to have the chance to make them and then um, interpret these guys' design. They look incredible as always. Next up by the Donut we have the actual Millie Land styled versions of Skyward Sword Link and Zelda from the beginning of Skyward Sword. I just really like the Millie Land design and I think it works particularly well for these two. Lots of fun little details and some articulation in the arms as well as a great cape on Link as well. He includes the Master Sword on his back, and I just think they look great, and um, I've never seen anyone talk about them. Next up, one that did get a lot of talk, this is Brixter's Link uh, from Breath of the Wild. I interpreted this into my Skyward Sword variation of him, however the original still stands as potentially the best of the versions. He looks incredible, the articulation is great, and is definitely a worthy ideas project if you went over to support this one right now. 
Next up by Kevin A. Hinkle, a mock that um, is not available on Google Images, but I found in one of the Beyond the Brick live streams with Creations for Charity. Um, showing up for like less than three seconds, I had this link, so I had to backwards engineer him into studio for this video. However, here is my engineered version. You can see him next to his Hylian shield, and once again, it is just a Miniland version of Classic Link. Next up, we have some micro figures in the style of the Mario 64 question block by Kylo Hutch Volume 2. We have uh, Link and Zelda, Child Link and Child Zelda, Ganondorf and Ganon, all from Ocarina of Time. All look fantastic. There's something very charming about this micro scale style. Next up, we have a rubricable model by Alorophilia and... Um, this is actually a 3-in-1 model, or like a bonus model for a 3-in-1 set, Mythical Creatures, which you can see down the bottom right, where you could turn it into a Bokoblin. And I just think that's fantastic. Like, as a as far as alternate builds go, that's that's incredible. That's, that's really awesome. I, I really, really like it. And um, if I had the set, I'd 100% be doing it, because it looks exactly like a Bokoblin, even if the colours are a little bit off. Next up by Dan Coe, another classic Lego Zelda mock. This one again featured on the Brothers Brick. Looks great as Child Link in this over and chibi style, and I love his Deku shield so, so much. Next up we have Regaru, who made a amazing Stalfos, and this guy looks incredible, again using the new Skulkin heads, which I think really, really works for them as well. And then by Joss Woodyard, we have another Skull Kid. This one being absolutely incredible. I love the usage of the flippers and the rubber bands on Majora's Mask. Definitely one of the best character creations from the Zelda franchise, even using bushes on the arms to create his little fluffy bits. He looks so, 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 so cool. Really, really awesome model. Next up by Xman3939, we have Cass on a little cliff. I'm assuming this is from the Heroes Cash. Uh, side quest and this cast model looks incredible the sculpting is amazing the terrain is amazing and you've even got some little luminous stones and ores for you to to break on the backside. a really awesome display piece that i think really does look absolutely incredible next up by brick 101 another classic this is the voxel link this is one you can actually get the studio file for and then build looks amazing uh, of course it, it's just so classic i i could not put it on here Back to Regaru though, he had this amazing iron knuckle and while I'm aware that he's used some custom pieces here, I think the general gist of what he's achieved can be recreated. In fact, the spear looks entirely recreatable and it makes amazing use of that gladiator head and some space visors on the shoulder pads. I think it's a really, really cool model that looks recreatable and just looks absolutely fantastic. Next up, of course, another classic, one that I've remade here on the channel. This is West Talbots. The images were showing the original design. However, the updated design is significantly better. Either way, it doesn't matter. This is a super, super iconic Lego Zelda model. In fact, potentially the most iconic with all the fake box art as well from back in 2013, 2014. And just the features here, it really does feel like a Lord of the Rings set, but for The Legend of Zelda. And I would have been remiss not to put it in this set. Next up, back to Brick Cluster, his other ideas project was the Farron Woods tree from Skyward Sword, making some very interesting choices here to recreate things like the Goddess Cube, Link Fi, and the Deku Babas, as along with the Kikwis and the Beetle. It look, it look great, and obviously the tree opens up and has the full interior in it, and it's just one of those models that while it doesn't look the great, I have a great amount of nostalgia for, and just reminds me of Star Wars, Skyward Sword. I would still want this on my shelf today. Next up, we have a part of the Jonas Cram Kakariko Village mock. Obviously, you guys will know him for doing the huge Kakariko. However, I didn't want to showcase that. I just wanted to showcase his frogs because I think they're cool. Obviously, this is the Korok puzzle, and I just think they're a really, really neat build. <laughs> Next up by Bobber1980, we have this bauble design for your Lego Christmas bulbs. And this is, of course, Link's house from Hateno. Looks fantastic. I mean, this is great. The instructions are actually available for this on his original post. And it just looks great. It's, it's really, really amazing. And I think this is a must-have for a Zelda fan to put in a bauble. I just got to get my hands on the pieces. And then back to Regaru, once again, we have his original Legend of Zelda mock, which is based off Dungeon 1. You can see Aguamentis in the back and the tree entrance for the dungeon. What can I say? It's just so creative, and I really love this interpretation of Zelda 1. I've often said that the 2D games aren't going to get as much representation when LEGO eventually decides to cover it, just because they're slightly older and because there's less you can do with it, that this just proves me wrong. He did a really amazing job recreating a little room from the dungeon, Aguamentis, and of course the treetop entrance. Such a shame that this didn't make 10k. 
And now we have a mock by Train of Thought Lego Brick Creations, and which is a micro scale shrine, which does look very cool. Complete different color scheme to the one we took a look at earlier, and makes great use of the elves eye print for the Goblin King to create the Sheikah eye at the top. I do kind of like the use of the trans orange and things, and overall, I'm just particularly pleased with how this one turns out. Again, perfectly recognizable, especially at this very, very small scale. Coming back to MB Mox, we have the other three of the ones he's worked on. We have his Temple of Time, which you can go support on LEGO Ideas, as well as get the instructions for over on his original post. We also have Clock Town Tower from Majora's Mask, and then we also have the Tower of the Gods from The Wind Waker, looking so much better than mine. It, they all look incredible. They're, they're really, really detailed. Temple of Time has some interiors. Again, that's another one I'd want to build if I actually had the pieces. Then we have Brick Gallery's infamous Hyrule Castle that's reached 10k twice now with the really cool Calamity Ganon build and just all of the details. Wow, does this model still just look incredible. Doesn't it just look fantastic? It's got all of that gothic architecture that the Breath of the Wild Hyrule Castle Sanctum has and it just makes me excited for when I finally get to build this myself as part of my Ultimate Hyrule Castle build series. And then back to Regaru once again, he is stealing most of the spots on this list. We have an imitation of the well, and this actually stands out to his w wider Legend of Zelda project, which he did based off Twilight Princess and Ocarina of Time. Using these slightly darker colour schemes and also having lots of play features, this set really does remind me of Attack on Weathertop from uh, the Lord of the Rings line, and just included some really fun play features. If you haven't seen this one before, I'd recommend checking it out. Then by Artem Biazayativ, we also have the other Hyrule Castle build, and I know on past I've gone in the record of saying I didn't like this approach and definitely didn't think it should deserve to be the idea's pick, given its eclectic and chaotic nature and no focus on a real Zelda game, um, with lots of links to past elements in it, however, this is still a very cool model for what it is. I do love the individual builds, like we have the Temple of Time, and while I'm not a fan of its overall composure and of some of the details, I do think it was very, very creative and included a load of fun play features, which are all Zelda referencing, including like the Minish Link one and the Moving Graveyard and the Hidden Heart piece. Those are all things that, as a Zelda fan, made me very, very interested, and I definitely think that um, it was a worthy model to get to 10k, but I'm also very, very glad that it didn't win. Next up by Captain Hobby, we have a Wind Waker Windfall Island 1 for 1 recreation, and this just looks fantastic. I'm just so pleased with how this turned out for him. It looks great. Um, it looks exactly like the town on a micro scale, and it's just fantastic. It's like a 3D art piece. And by bricking it in a similar style, we have a artistic interpretation of Coherent, obviously not one for one or accurately placed stuff, but just some of the more iconic like elements. I believe this was based off a render or something that the Nintendo released as part of the game. Maybe it was the cover art or something. Either way, looks fantastic, particularly the Windfish Volcano, and um, it's just another really nice Zelda mock. But by Brick Gallery, before he made his Hyrule Castle, he made this very different looking water temple mock which I think is important to talk about. It's definitely not up to the scratch of some others but it's got that 2015-2016 charm and I love a lot of the features here. I particularly like the way he has chosen to represent more feel as well as the locked door and the tech type given how limited pieces we have. You even got Navi on the inside as well as a load of different pat uh, like platforms. It's really really cool to look at and look back on and does remind me a lot of our custom dungeon sets ourselves. But by why Kobe, we have the most amazing Sheikah slate that I've ever seen. I have actually tried to replicate this myself, as in like years and years ago, I tried to make a Sheikah slate. However, he's just knocked it out of the park. It looks fantastic. He finally found a color scheme that worked using the dark tan, orange, and dark brown. Or should I just say reddish brown? I can't quite tell from this render. Either way, looks absolutely amazing. I'm glad that someone finally managed to do a Sheikah slate justice, and I, I think it looks incredible. But as we get closer to the end of today's video, we have Brussels Sprouts Wind Waker map recreation in a modular fashion, recreating every island from The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, and once again, this is just a fantastic model. Again, not every piece in here is actually like buildable because he's used some pieces that don't exist in those colors. However, that really, really doesn't matter. This model just looks great. It just, it really, really does. There's just so much to like about this and how it's been constructed and so many little techniques, and they're all recognizable as their respect islands such as you can see the boat race on here in Forbidden Woods, Tower of the Gods, Dragon Roost, uh, the Lava Island, Tingles, <laughs> Tingles Island, Outset and, and all the other ones here. Just looks fantastic. 
And by Lego Lemaniac, we have the Zelda the Master Sword Puzzle Box, which is a fantastic model that I've had the pleasure of building in real life. It looks wonderful, and the puzzle aspect is so cool and so Zelda, and it, it's wonderful. Every Zelda fan should have this display set, although I will warn you, it's over 1,000 parts and does take a while to piece together and build. And then we have another Speedyhead entry, which is Link's House from Link's Awakening, this model looks fantastic, whether it's the repetitive use of the quill element in green, or the fence posts, or the dirt around the edge, or even just the house's roof. It just all really, really does look incredibly like the model and just fits the Link's Awakening remake style so, so well. And by KT Brickworks, we have the Tarrytown Modular, which is a quirky take on um, the modular line and also the Tarrytown houses. They look exactly perfect as they should and work incredibly well i would never put them in a modular layout but i would like to have this as a one-off base plate because i think they look neat i um, maybe would change out the base though to like a dirt hill but still looks incredible Ben Builds Lego, though, made an amazing version of Ocarina of Time's Hyrule Castle in the architecture style line, and it does look exactly like it. It looks really well done and has some amazing secrets on the interior. Overall, another fantastic model and a really good representation of such a classic location. And one of the recent entries from JK Brickworks, we have his uh, Adventures on the Great Sea, um, with his version of the King of Red Lions, which I don't believe should be dark red. But, you know, he made his choices. It has some amazing kinetic motion with the upping and downing and the seagulls that bob up and down and the sail looks incredible. Definitely lots to love here and definitely worth a shout out. However, I still think that the King of Red Lions should be in red. And then lastly, by Skyward Brick, we have some of his sword models. He's done plenty of these. However, my favourite two are, of course, the Skyward Sword ones with the Goddess Sword and Demise's Demon Sword, respectively in a Goddess statue and in Demise's Mouth, which I think looks really, really fun. He makes some great sword models. Definitely check them out on Rubricable. Again, if you see them anywhere else, they're not his. They're rip-offs. But if you buy the instructions from Rubricable, you'll be in for a treat. They are fantastic. And that is going to do it for the best Zelda mocks. Let me know if I missed any. And once again, I want to say that, of course, there are so many, so many other mocks out there. This is a very biased list. I didn't even have time to talk about all the nostalgia around, like, the Lego Zora's videos and Hiding Bricks' amazing sets and, and so on. So I hope you guys enjoyed and maybe discovered a mock that you have never heard of before because there were certainly loads that I hadn't seen before. So there's always more to discover, and I hope you enjoyed taking a look at some of the other wonderful mock creators we have out there. And um, you'll see me back here next week with Hyrule Castle before hopefully we start getting on the Wave 4 stuff. So, fingers crossed for that. Anyway, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.